You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales, in the beautiful by neutral Texas and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. I'm Ibarra Libro, and thanks for watching Sun TV News. Acting Governor Her Excellency Anya Williams has added her voice to the unemployment concerns that are being raised by several Turks and Caicos Islanders. Honorable Williams says unemployment continues to be a major challenge for government, but she also noted that the situation is made worse because many unemployed persons are not registering with the Labor Department. The Acting Governor was speaking during the 2013-40's TCI strategic meeting, which was held at Beaches Resort and Spa on Tuesday, July 9th. Honorable Williams also said that there are a number of persons who do not want to work in the sister islands. We hear more in this report. We've been trying to steer development to the other islands and try to encourage persons to migrate to the islands. I can say to you that even in government, we had a civil service meeting yesterday and we spoke about this. We've trained many locals to come back and to work in the, in the government, the Turks and Caicos. But when we say to them that we're going to transfer you to South Caicos, North Caicos, and Middle Caicos, they resign. Um, so that's a challenge for us. So you find, actually, that when you visit these islands, many of the persons working on those islands are actually contract workers. And many of the locals that are on those islands do not work because of issues surrounding migration. They don't want to migrate to Provo. And you have people that are in Provo that aren't working that don't want to migrate to the other islands. That's particularly a challenge for us. Um, we're trying to move people from out of employment into job opportunities. And there will be some few, a few jobs that will be coming up in government, but in addition to that, trying to work with the private sector for job initiatives, trying to use development agreements to secure places for persons for internship programs and so on. And in addition to that, trying to put in place at the college, which Mr. Jones spoke about, new programs and actually a trade school. All these things are very challenging because they all have financial implications, but it's something that we're trying to to work towards. I want to say first that, as I said earlier, the numbers for unemployment are not completely accurate because many persons do not register. Mm -hmm. Second, I want to say also that I want to qualify what I said because I know oftentimes you go to places, and I'll be frank and say this, people take from it that someone said people don't want to work. I didn't say people don't want to work. Mm -hmm. I said that the reasons for unemployment will vary, and some of the reasons are not necessarily that people don't want to work, but I said the jobs that are being provided or the islands which they are located is often a challenge. So I want to qualify that because I know oftentimes what's taken away is not actually what was said. That's the first thing I want to say. Secondly, to say that the, there are issues surrounding employment and unemployment. Um, also, the availability of jobs, first and foremost, and then secondly, the way that jobs are awarded. And a lot of this rests, as I said earlier, we do need to finish to finalize the immigration policy. The government needs to finalize that. And we also need to put in place new employment mechanisms because it is very difficult, you would find, for when the matching between contract work and local employment is very, very difficult. I find that even in government. And some of the ways that you have to do that is by putting in place policies that ensure that there's local employment. We do the same in the civil service. The acting governor said government is also willing to rehire persons who took severance packages a few years ago as long as they are willing to repay the money. Persons with the VS, with the voluntary severance program, we've been working to re-engage civil servants, those that want to come back to the government. Um, I can see right in the room of Scotiabank, and Scotiabank has been facilitating that by actually sitting with us and stating that persons that have taken the package, that have found difficulties now in meeting their commitments, the banks are willing to work with them by helping them to come back in the government by working out payment plans for them that they can pay back the unused portion of their voluntary severance and apply. But they have to apply to come back because you would recognize that people that have been in government have had the opportunity to have a job. There are other persons now that want jobs in government. They are returning students and other persons, so you're now competing for jobs. So if a person wants to return to the service and there's a position that's being advertised, you are free to apply for that position just like any other. Turks Islander, if you qualify and you're successful in the interview, you're given 60 days to pay back the money. So you use your offer letter to go to the banks, obtain the funding, we give you the calculation for what you need to pay back, and you can come back. We have several persons that have taken up that offer. So it's open for any person that's taken VS to do so if you go through the proper 
recruitment exercise. Other than that, I think that one of the things that the government has been keen on is working with hotels that have development agreements. Because you know, certain development agreements in the past had certain concessions for employment. One of the things that we've been doing recently is that we've removed the employment concessions from our development agreements. So development agreements no longer say that automatically by coming into the Turks and Caicos Islands and building a hotel or whatever the case may be, you will get 1,000 PRCs or 500 work permits. We no longer say that. Your development agreement now says you will be subjected to the immigration ordinance and the immigration protocol and we will try to fast track your applications. That's all it says. And I think that that's a very positive step because what that does is that that puts you through the process just as if any other person. So those are the things that the government is doing to ensure that there's local employment for all. And then it also is backed up by proper education and training policies because what you find is that persons may be trained for a certain job, but that job is no longer available. So they want to move into something else. So that's why we have to assist by providing training and other programs to ensure that people can move into other fields that they need to. We have a big problem in the Turks and Caicos right now with teaching. A very, very big issue. Most of the teachers, 70% of the teachers in the government schools are contract workers. They're contract workers because we haven't been able to attract the number of persons that we need to the field of teaching. And that has to be backed up by an education policy because if we're going to move more for local persons into teaching, that means that for the next five to 10 years, we have to say if we have a million dollars for scholarships, 70% of that is only gonna go to teaching because we wanna phase out contract teachers by a certain point. Now that's very, very difficult when you still have needs in terms of nursing um, and other technical and other subjects. So there are things that are in the pipeline, there are things that are starting to progress. As I said, it will all depend on policy. It's gonna depend on your immigration policy, it's gonna depend on your employment policy, and it's gonna depend on your investment policy because many of the issues surrounding employment actually rest with investment and with development agreements. The government, if you have a development agreement, you have to honor it, that's, that's a given. But the way to move forward is that any new development agreements, you now have to put them on a new footing. And there's several new developments coming on stream. You have several major hotel and other developments, and I can tell you that all of the new developments don't have immigration concessions in it. This is Sun TV, real news as it happens. We'll be right back. Life moves fast. It's extraordinary what you can see when you take a second look. Capture the extraordinary around you with Digicel's 4G mobile internet. Share the moment instantly with our super fast speeds on your mobile device. The internet as it was meant to be. Only with Digicel 4G. Digicel. Be extraordinary. Honorable Williams, who is the youngest deputy governor in any of the British overseas territories, said government is also committed to tackling poverty in the Turks and Caicos Islands, although it is a challenge because of fiscal problems. The poverty assessment, the data that was used is actually from 2001, and Mr. Jones will speak to that. But we do have now the census data, and we're going through and analyzing that data, and from that we'll be coming very, we'll, we'll have various reports that will come to fruition. And it's going to be very telling for us um, as to how to <coughs> share our priorities. One of the challenges that you know you have is how do you, in a time when you have fiscal challenges, how do you then prioritize your funding? How popular is it for you to not build a school or a road and then to instead put it to social programs or to put it to governance and so on? That's very, very challenging because people often vote and sometimes by what they see. But social programs are a need. What we've been trying to do in social programs is actually not only from governments and we're trying to work with various corporate entities. And I think that the corporate sponsors around the Turks and Caicos have done quite well. They've adopted many schools and many other youth and other social programs. Um, and that's allowed us to go very far, but there's still a lot more that has to be done. I think that poverty also rests on the heels of the immigration policy, which we know we have to come back to because we still haven't finalized the pathway to citizenship. There are lots of persons in the country that are living in poverty or living on the poverty line. Many of these persons do not have legal status and so on, which makes it very hard for them to access employment and other opportunities. And all these things will rest on the government's immigration policy. So these are things that are very much a work in progress. I believe the Premier can speak to the 
um, property to citizenship, but we should see something coming to the house. I'm gonna give him. A, I'm gonna put a, a, de- a date here, <laughs> and then after this, he may kick me under the table. But <laughs> I'll say that he. I'm, I'm not gonna be specific, but I'll say that we'll have the property to citizenship by the third quarter, right, Premier? <laughs> there are all of these are things that are on the leg- on the legislative agenda, and I believe policy, as I said during my presentation, policy will direct the opportunities and so on. And the policy is what's needed in the country because it's going to set the stage for where we go from here. Um, from the policies, finances, and everything else will follow the policy, le- policy and legislative decisions that are made. I'm Ibor Liabru, and thanks for watching Sun TV News. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you real news as it happens, directly to your computer or mobile device.